Okay, as always, disclaimer, I'll try to keep all of these videos under 15 minutes. Uh, what else? Uh, I tend to say whatever I want. I'm doing 30 of these videos to cram in before I go away, you know, before the family goes away to Costa Rica. So what's happening is I'm just giving up all of this information that is all going to be part of the journey of building the perfect business, but also how someone like myself is able to do these things while running a business or owning a business, okay? The trick is you never, this is why today, so today is day 12, okay? Let's go. And the other thing is there's this sure microphone here if you're, not, if you're listening to this in the podcast method and it's only audio, when I go away from the microphone, it doesn't, it's doing an auto mode thing with this near and far anyway. Day 12 of 30, okay? What a lot of this is going to be describing are SaaS platforms, uh, you know, the operations of them all together, you know, a perfect model, which is for the perfect ecosystem, which is for the perfect business, and, a, and the toolbox. So a lot of the operations are SaaS platforms or utilities or technologies, tabs in Google, Google Chrome, that you would also consider in your toolbox, okay? But some of those things are, you know, they need to be described independently. Like they don't just, they, I can't just describe in general, I have to actually mention the brand of the SaaS service, platform, product, whatever, application. Say, for example, the yesterday's was Slack, okay? So today, uh, another ad addition to the ecosystem, to uh, your toolbox as an owner and as someone who should demonstrate digital leadership to the team is Calendly. I'm excited to talk about this right now. Calendly can change the world. And it is. They are. A while ago, I don't know how many years, but I started noticing this shared public calendar idea, whether it be in an email and I would say I was one of the first to start using it right away. And I was, I saw it the day I saw it, the day I started using it. There are other services than Calendly, but I love the agnostic version of Calendly where it sticks, they stick to their lane about calendars and time booking and event booking, and they're staying there. Now, they have a lot of power though, because say for example, it's become common now to have a, maybe to have a public link through, you know, Salesforce connected to something or HubSpot connected to something, something sales related or connected to something. So that there's, there's a pipeline of transmission of keeping the, keeping you clicking until you get into a calendar, let's just say, okay? And what do I mean by getting into a calendar? Oh my God. How do you know when someone is available at the same time you are available now this is the, there is a, a line dividing the world right now and this line dividing the world right now are it, there's people on one side and people on the other people on one side are used to the always available, distracted, is professional, you just fucking deal with it, world, okay? So what would happen in, on that side is if you were using a calendar, there basically you would force feed the invite to the other parties, okay? That's how it's. That's how it was done before public servers, public serv, um, calendar sharing URL services like Calendly. Okay, think about that for a second. Also, 
you were probably, you answered your phone all the time, no matter what, because that's professional. You, you responded to email immediately because that's professional. Okay. This idea of that, the, you know, there's been a culture shift in this availability idea. In other words, people could be, there is an, there is a, the other side is very aware that you could be doing something else at the time that someone else communicates with you, whether it be email, SMS, oh God, hopefully professional SMS through something other than your personal phone or your personal number, um, email, uh, SMS, a telephone call, whatever, or sending an email with an invite in it to a calendar event that they chose for you. Like, and then here's the best part. And like I said, I'm going to go all over the place on some of these videos, but this one's really important. This one is really important because I, I, I haven't even t gotten to where I want to. I might have to go a little further in this one because I've been very excited all day to talk about Calendly. Um, Let's say, for example, first off, in the way that calendar invites were designed and calendar services in general, just calendar in general, not like iCal, but calendars in general, okay? There are three options, accept, decline, and maybe, okay? Accept, decline, and maybe. Now, the reason for that is because you can make a decision later based on whatever. It's your time. The amount of people that are forced into like some sort of challenging decision of do I decline yet or do I accept now or do I maybe? I used to maybe all the time, right? I'm that asshole because I didn't build calendars. I didn't design the protocol of calendaring, but it was a, the maybe button was always available to me so I could always just click maybe, okay? So see like like... I'm not fighting anything here. I just saw that a long time ago and I was like, yeah, it's maybe for me until I figure out if, you know, how I'm going to schedule this. Because just because there's 16 people inside that invite doesn't mean that I have to be bullied into abusing, into accepting that invite time as the, as the law, <laughs> which is what people assume about calendar invites. Some of them, right? Now, Along comes Calendly. And like I said, there are other, other online calendaring services, but I like the, where Calendly is going. So, you know, fuck you, everybody else. I, I love Calendly. <laughs> okay, so they come along. And so the idea is that the service that you subscribe to, right, is basically the URL calendly.com forward slash and then whatever, your, your, whatever you make as the username or the business name or whatever, if they go there, if anybody in the world goes there and you have events turned on, you know, timed by like 15 minutes, 20, an hour, whatever you want, right? The way it works is your calendars are linked to Calendly. Like whatever calendars you want, work, personal, multiple versions of work calendars, multiple versions of... It doesn't matter. It can all be linked into your Calendly account. So therefore, therefore, if you have a public URL in, that is Calendly, that's available, and your calendars have been you know, populated properly with what you're doing and when you're not available, then Calendly will use, based on the algorithms that you set inside there, it will basically allow people to select the times that you're available. You see how powerful that is. So over here, Jason, I've got multiple calendars attached to the Calendly for the automated method all over the place. So that's how I can schedule podcast times, teaching times. That's how I can do any urgent things. That's how I can have family time during the day. That's how personal doesn't, you know, I just layer them all in. Calendly has control of everything. So that when I go in, so that every day, 24 hours a day, if anybody goes to that public URL, when they're accessing my calendar through everything, I've given that time as an available time for you. For the public, no questions asked. Now, there are some things that get, that get there if you're not really good with calendars, but here's the thing that's awesome about Calendly is it teaches you to be good with a calendar. 
Because if you're super tight with Calendly and you're calendaring and your time, then you won't get like screwed by like someone taking that 15 minutes right before you booked something out because you're usually it's really easy to turn off certain events and then reprogram things and quickly turn them on back and turn them all back on right there's so many things that this solves right this is the future you know remember how i mentioned you know that check first ask second check first is calendly because what you're doing is you're going and you're checking this public URL to see when that person's available. You don't have to force, you don't have to send them a goddamn calendar invite and force their hand to, the, to this time and date that no one knows except you, the one sending it that is, that is creating the event. You see, you will create enemies in the future if all you do is send calendar invites. Or worse, Email tennis calendar scheduling. What the fuck? It is like, do you want to know how much wasted time that is? I think one day I calculated that if there's five people in an invite and it's email, based on the type of the habits, traditional operational behavioral habits of, you know, people that are email junkies only using calendar invites to like, you know, control the universe... Basically, if there's five people, they're not all under the same business. In other words, like they could be other businesses. If, say, for example, there's denials of the event or you don't even have an event attached into the, like a calendar inside the email, like you're just asking in the body to five people, it's like a week or more to find an hour in seven to 10 days. That's how much time it takes to find that time. Because other parties have other things to do. They're not going to say yes, and they might reply in 24 hours. So if they reply in 24 hours, what about the next person that changes the time that replies 24 hours again? Bang, bang, bang. Email, tennis. Pretty soon someone's calling someone. Did you get my email? Oh, my favorite phone call. Did you get my email? I'm going to do a whole goddamn podcast on that sentence alone okay did you get my email oh my god like how passive aggressive is that question <laughs> anyway i digress when you have a system that's broken like that what's happening is you're becoming an offender Okay, when you're an offender, you're not modern. When you're not modern, what's happening is no one wants to communicate with you anymore. They know that you're a bandwidth vampire. Maybe they didn't until I said bandwidth vampire. Good. You know, I'm just saying, putting it out there that Calendly can solve that problem. There are people, and I've met them, come across, had Zooms with them, come across where they don't think that that's polite or professional sending out a calendar URL here, jump into my calendar as if that's like a negative thing. <laughs> How is that a negative thing? A negative thing stating that I know that you, I respect your time and let's manage each other's expectations and manage our bandwidths together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you the time that I have available and then you can pick that time so that I am making it available for you, for you. There will be no tennis. I guarantee to be there. You know, if, if like, that's why I'm putting it out there, because I know that that's the time that I made available. I'm not in deep work. I'm not in something else. I'm not doing something else. That's when it's made available. Done. Versus all the other ways you do that. All the other ways that anybody does scheduling, right? That's like, it's ridiculous to me not to. Here's the best part. If you, you have that in your toolbox, it can be expressed so much further. This is going to be a longer, I'm noticing 14 minutes here. It could be expressed so much further, which is why I'm talking about it, because we're building the perfect business, right? Calendly has a service that's called Calendly for Teams, okay? That means that you can use these features inside Calendly for like, you know, multiple person choices of their available time in your team, round robin, there's a whole, you know what, I'm not even going to crack, you go and look, okay, because you need one. 
you should subscribe to Calendly right now. Get yourself a free account. And then if you're a business owner, whoever's in control of your operational decisions, that's the person where you're like, yeah, we should probably use Calendly for teams, like immediately, right? Because that means all of your team members will have a Calendly account. They're all under the same site, the same domain. They can see each other's availability. You can create these groups. You can, there's so many features that will change the world. So now that whole idea of having a shared calendar. Well, now you know an availability of each of the team members in the team and you can share those team calendars automatically. Holy shit. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. Now you've tightened up the communications, sharing the bandwidth of your team inside the institution. Okay. Also, this whole out of office thing, etc. If you if you set this up right, Team members will know what other team members are doing. Everybody will know what everybody's doing. You know what that's called? That's called what I said that check first, ask second. You probably don't even have to ask because you can see it, right? Now, here's the best part about that. Now you can kind of eliminate some of that tragic loss of bandwidth, trying to choose and fix all these times and events, etc. The, uh, it's endless, the things that Calendly solves. It's endless, endless, okay? Now, also there's like, there's so many features. I don't even know where to go, I'm staring at it right now. I'm like, what to talk, I'm talking about, you can talk about anything. There's workflows in there, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever, it's, a, it's part of the toolbox and it's a necessity, okay? It's a necessity. Having someone communicate with the automated method or myself and they're already a Calendly user, when I'm logged into Calendly and I go to their calendar, right, I can see where I'm not available already inside the choice. Do you see and hear what I'm talking about? In other, in other words, it's easier the more people use it. Okay, the more people that use Calendly, the easier it is for everybody to book time together. And we're only talking like 15 minutes here. And it doesn't only have to be sales. It could be so many things. Okay, and it's also that 15 minutes doesn't have to be 15 minutes. It could be five. It could be two, right? Depending on the type of person that understands how Calendly works. And depending on the person that's very f fluent with Zoom, right, or Google Meet, or whatever, or even a phone call, right? Whatever that is that you have set up, however, it's like if those two people are Calendly users, and if those two people are extremely efficient, and if those two people are very, very, very aware of bandwidth and they don't wanna waste each other's time, sometimes these Zooms, meets, calls, five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, I don't care, it's fast. Information is transferred faster, and, it, and you don't have to worry about, did I send the email? Did they read the email? Are they going to reply to the email when I want them to? Because that's when I hope that they check and reply to their email. <laughs> I'm going to do a comedy routine about email. Because, <laughs> I mean, I could just go down that rabbit hole because it's so stupid. It's so stupid, right? Like, I just start joking about it, and then I start... I start laughing to myself because everybody listening knows exactly what I'm talking about. It just becomes like, who's higher up on the mountain? Who's in the castle? Who's not? Who's in control of who? That's how bandwidth works to people that are ignorant, right? That's how, but man, be polite. That's literally being polite and knowing how to manage expectations and manage other people's bandwidth, especially inside your team is why people want to work in that institution instead of fucking off and going somewhere else because they hate working for you. Anyway, I digress again. Where did I want to go with this? Oh yeah, I wanted to get into the future a little bit, okay? So I'm going to open this up. Let's say a lot of people use Calendly. Let's say more people use Calendly soon. Here's what it's gonna do for me, <laughs> okay? So I'm obviously an av advocate of it and a user of Calendly. I'm also someone who loves working with people that use Calendly. I am now business to business aware of a very awesome feature that could come to light that Calendly has the power to do. If you're listening Calendly, this is me talking to you. Groups. When you're working with a team, they're all inside the team. 
What I do is I have links. Like I have a URL, like, you know, bookmarking folder that's just other people's Calendly links. So that what I can do is I can easily scroll through these and find the people's Calendly's that I basically communicate with quite frequently and then open up multiple ones in tabs in Google Chrome because it doesn't show in Calendly. It does not show everybody's availability together except for my own in comparison to theirs. And so if I have like, let's say 10 people, here's where it gets, this is why I'm, t this is why I'm telling you this. Okay, here's where it gets awesome. So I have 10 tabs open, all of which are logged into Calendly, the other URL, the other public URL, so I can see the events of the other people. I just have to do some cross-referencing to find out if I know it's about a 15-minute talk we have to have or 50, 20 minutes or a half an hour. Remember, these are all efficient people because they use Calendly. Calendly also, Calendly really filters through people that are inefficient, right? It, it, because I find the people that ostracize it and think it's unprofessional, like there was some tweet and I never respond to anything social media wise, but there was some tweet where it was negative against Calendly and I was like so angry. I literally looked at my phone and I was like, what? Oh my God. Like I wanted to drive into Twitter, like, and I never used Twitter. I wanted to go so hard down into Twitter and just like open up the earth, you know, open the, earth, the bowels of hell and bring it on that tweet. Just because I could see it, like it's so stupid. It's stupid to think like that, okay? I don't care who you are. Anyway, so I got 10 tabs open. I can easily just put me into each of the 15s or the 20s or the 30s that are the same for those 10 people. That's a little cumbersome. However, if Calendly socializes, in other words, they become a social icon like Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or YouTube or whatever, you know, the icons at the bottom of your page or your link, tr your link tree or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. The icons that everybody uses to represent that social platform. If Calendly goes that direction, and here's me being a little bit forward, if you can, you know, list people that you allow in certain groups, they should be able to see, you should be able to see all their calendars at once. If you start to be able to get business to business, business to business, grouping of Calendly would fucking change the world now, okay? Because if you think about what I'm doing, think about what another business could do. Right? Like say if you're a Calendly user and you go to a website, instead of phoning or emailing, right? You click their Calendly icon and boom, that's when you can speak to a support representative, a customer service person, someone in, the tr in that system, some communicate, whatever, whatever you need to do, you know exactly when it's going to happen, you can schedule it. Game changer, right? You wonder why I, I got, get, would get so pass, passionate about this because I can see the operational lag across the board for something like communication. And because everybody has every tool and they use every tool at once to get someone's attention, you know, that's where the distraction comes in. It's ridiculous to watch and it needs to be more efficient. This is how you do it. Okay, that's how you do it. So add Calendly for Teams into your ecosystem. Hands the fuck down, right? I say so. <laughs> and what I say is law, nah. But I mean, I'm trying to build the perfect fucking business here.